you may want to do a an AO overlay. Okay, let me show you what that is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a fill layer here. I'm only going to make it color. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my textures, find the AO that I baked and slap that into the base color. Now look at what that did, right? It's pretty crazy. And you're like, okay, well, that's just an AO though. So if I change this to something like multiply now, then here's what it's doing is it's taking my base color that's already there and it's multiplying a subtle AO over top of it. All my darks from that AO map are going over top of it. And you can see how much that that's exaggerating my model quite a bit. Now you probably want to lower this down so it's not 100% there. Maybe 40. This is a great little rendering technique to get you just a little bit of extra AO on your model. And that may also make your form stand out slightly. Multiply is going to only add the darks. If you do an overlay, that's going to add light and darks to your model. So you get a little boost of brightness too, instead of just darkness. All right, but I think multiply is probably better. If I look at the base color here, that's what I'm getting. Just a little bit of AO influence on this model here. I'm gonna try to tweak this thing back and mask out my stuff there. Remember that my grunge was scaling too much. I need to drop that down a lot. I just don't want that much repeating going on. Okay, and I want this grunge This guy should be, truthfully, I don't think it's making the triplanar stuff stand out too much. I mean, if you ever get any seams like this, you may want to just go in and mask it out yourself because it just, sometimes it just looks unnatural, right? And now my scale is pretty crazy there. Go up one. Uh, looks like my curvature weight needs to go down maybe a little bit. There we go. What I'm going to do here, once again, is I'm just going to put a paint over top of this and let's paint out everything because I, well, I wanted my, my letters to have that oomph, but I feel like my blade is getting just way too much of that oomph. So I'm gonna paint out everything but that edge wear. I'm just gonna use these shapes, go to my UV, sh UV shells. I'm painting black, not white. Go back to my paint layer. There we go. Beautiful. Get all this stuff out of the mask. Awesome. I want to go to polygons. Let's see if we can do the same thing. Is that too far? No. Right there. That's too far. Right there there. Right. My hardness on my brush so I can mask things out just a little bit better. Do a shift click. Paint some of this stuff out. Why? I should go on that way. Nope. 
Now this is looking a little bit nastier than I did last time here. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to undo some of this painting stuff. Because I think, you know, I want some of this grunge in there, but the way that I'm painting, it's very obvious. Okay, so I want to change that up a little bit. So instead of me working with the alpha here, we need to pick, um, I need to pick a good brush that's going to be a more organic shape. We could do something like Dirt Splash. And now I have like a, you know, a dirtier shape that I can work with here. Now when I mask, it's looking a little bit more organic and more broken up. No solid lines. It's wrong. Wow. I'm making solid lines, but I'm using this dirt splash to kind of break it up afterwards. Okay. All right. Still have like Photoshop controls in my head right now. Can't see my character. This guy's kind of soft. I should, I should have hardened him a little bit. Break it up a little bit there. But we're definitely not getting any like circle lines. All right, so that's my edge wear for that guy. Looking sweet, fan. I need to make sure I name this stuff too. Font wear. What's this guy? What are you? Black liner. Cool. I was praying for you there. I really was. Noxious. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make a folder, put all my font stuff in the one folder. And with this in mind, if my stuff just looks awful and I want to move it, I can take all this stuff together here and just move it. filter this thing. Maybe not. Oh yeah. Can't do that. Okay. That's cool. Make sure your stuff's in the right spot before you move it around. I thought there was a way I could do that. I don't really feel like playing into that so far right now. Right. And then this is just what that is this the opacity? Just my blade itself, yeah. I just did a metal. Metal on the blade. It's all cool. Blade. Base. Alright, let's do that edge wear again. Um, since my blade's down here. A black mask. Add a generator. Get that ed uh, metal edge wear again. I hope this is the same one. I think we we did use the same one. Yeah. Uh, curvature weight. Bring it down a little bit. Bring the grunge up a little bit more. There we go. Looking sweet. 
Run scale though. Run scale is too high. Bring that down just a little bit. Get rid of all that repeating stuff, right? Take a look at the map. All right, so that's what my map is doing. Okay. So that's that. I want to break up that edgeware now. So let's get over here, put a fill on top of this and slap my grunge in there to break up that edgeware. Where was my slashy stuff? There's my slashy stuff. Right there. Invert it. Make this a multiply so that we're getting off of that mask. So now I got a little bit more breakup on that. Let's see what this looks like. Okay. My grunge needs more balance. I would say it needs a little bit more scale. Scale up a little bit. Too much, too much. Nothing repeating. That works, I like that. Um, rotation, give this thing a little bit more of a slope. Let's bring it all the way over here. Drop it down just a little bit. Balance, a lot more balance. There we go. And I want this to be triplanar too. So let's get rid of UV projection, go to triplanar. That completely changes things. That should be my first step from now on. Don't let me go anywhere else without that first step. Because that just completely changed my scale and my rotation and everything. Supposed to be watching me with this stuff, guys. Come on. Not doing your jobs. All right, so that's my edge wear now with that material breakup, with that mask breakup. That's a little repetitive still. Still a little repetitive. So let me go to my grunge and scale it down a little bit more. So it wants to be pretty high scale, but there's that. I really wanted this thing to just not feel so banded. There we go. I'm liking that a lot more. All right. I get to work with the material here too. Uh, my edge wear is not going to take away from my metal. So I still want this to be metal. I would say that it adds to my roughness though. So let's put a little bit of roughness on there. Um, metal for base color. Well, we could put a little bit of height in there too. Just little smidgen, little smidgen of height. Okay, base color, let's see what the base color looks like here. Let's go to channels. Base color right now should be, I think it, was, it should be a little bit brighter. It should be a little bit brighter. So I'm gonna grab this and just find this color right here. Let's go a little bit higher with it. Let's see what this does. Okay, I think that's a little bit too much. Drag it down just a little bit. All right, so we got some mild scratching going on here. Let's move on to, uh, I'm just going to use some uh, material. We had it. What material did we use last time for that thread? What was like plastic cables, rated? Just want to braid. I think that was it though. Plastic cables braided. Let's do it. 
Okay. We'll take some of the roughness off of this thing, though. Or raise the roughness. That way it seems more like thread. Uh, scale this thing. Alright. Um, and I'm only I'm masking this. Adding a color selection. And with my D map selected here, I'm going to pick one color. So that's the beauty of ID maps once again. Um, and now I can see that I want a mild rotation on this thing to make it seem a little bit more twisted. Right, and that's one area. You know what I'm gonna do though? I'm going to blur this a little bit. Or yeah, hardness. Can I do that? More tolerance. There we go. Increase it a little bit. Not super crazy, but I don't want it to be super hard. Let's take a look. Cool. Awesome. I think that's better. I definitely picked up on my seams a little bit there more. Um, try planar projection. And I gotta restart <laughs> my scale and my rotation. Awesome. Once again, I can have that AO overlay over top of this to kind of make it feel a little bit better. Okay, so let's come back to the material now. I didn't want full roughness. Give it a little bit of softness there. I don't want any metal. Cable distortion, technical parameters, normal intensity. I go up with that, down, sideways. I don't think that's affecting too much. Height position. Oh. No, I don't want to affect that too much. Height range. There we go. I'm getting just a little bit more depth to those threads. change the colors of those threads too. So if I wanted, you know, something more menace, you know, well, this is a little menacing. Let's go for dark blue, maybe. Yeah, a bit deeper black. Gosh, yeah. Pretty tight. Maybe a little bit too deep. I think my thread is probably not a natural color either, so let me soften that up a little bit more. There we go. Outstanding. Now, so I don't lose all the work that I did on this and or lose my settings. I'm going to duplicate this layer. This is what we call a UV transform layer where I have just a duplicate and I'm just going to move the color and shape around. So right now I'm going to delete my mask selection, pick another color selection. And I'm going to select, what did we do last time? We did green, we'll do blue this time. Let's increase the tolerance on this thing. See, yeah, it's too far. Okay, so what I'm go actually going to do then is not do this. Let me push this down here. I'm going to make this a white mask. I'm simply going to paint out. Okay. 
Yeah, I need to paint out some of those shapes. And I'm going to make this output value black. So let's pick this green color again and make that an output value of black. That way it's masking all of that stuff. Cool. And now I just need to come in here, add a paint, and let's paint out the shapes. They don't need to be threads. So this guy, these guys. Oh, grab too much. Grabbed too much. There we go. There's one more color I need to get out of there, and that's the red in between those threads. So let's add another color selection, or wait, let's just add a new one, right? There we go, add the reds in there. And that's already receiving some of my tolerance stuff in there too. Um, let me reverse the braid on this thing so I can see that it's ch a different channel though too. Rotate this guy and give him the offset twist. There we go. Kind of hypnotic now. <laughs> Just to give these guys a little extra oomph, I'm going to do that AO overlay. Let's see what we get. I'm going to make a fill. Come over to textures. Let's only work with base color. Put my AO in the base color. And multiply. Bring this guy down to not too much. And now we can see a little bit of shadow between my threads there. 